We know Steve is strong. He can carry heavy things like gold, diamonds, water, netherite, you, you, you name it. But just how strong is he really? Well, we're about to find out. First, we need to find out what the heaviest thing Steve could hold is. And okay, that what is the heaviest? Gold block is what I would say if this was... See, that's what a lot of people do go for. They always say the gold block is the heaviest thing in Minecraft. 2018, but no, there's actually a block that's seven times heavier than gold, and that is netherite. But to find out okay. what the netherite block weighs, we can actually use a gold block for reference. You see, a gold block weighs about 21.3 tons. And dividing that by nine, we get to see how much each little gold weighs. Multiply that by four, and we get how much gold... Oh, of course, because each... Ah, like a gold block? No, a gold ingot, a netherite ingot has four gold in it, so a netherite block has 36 gold in it. Okay, that's interesting. Inside netherite, but for the nether scrap, we don't really know what that is. Yeah, we know it comes from ancient debris, which can be found underneath the nether, but we don't really know much more than that. But taking some lowball assumptions, we could assume it's was popularly theorized. And that theory is, basically a bunch of hoglins and whatnot died, and it's just the remains. So we could assume... So it's like, it's, it's the weight of a bone block? I, I never even knew that was a thing, that the netherite is remains of, of like, bones. No the way. The yeast scrap is at least as heavy as a bone block. And after some rather concerning research- There's no way that ancient- Is that what ancient debris is? No way. I've always wondered- I've, thought of, I've never thought about it. I said I always wondered. I've never wondered what it is, actually. I found that a one by one meter cube of bone would be 2.2 tons. Why is there a study on this? Whoa! Two tons for bones. Wow, that's quite a lot. Together, we can see that one netherite bar is 19 tons. And then wow. multiply that by nine, and we get the insane 19 weight of tons. 164 tons for, for one, one netherite block. block. AKA Whoa. already the weight of a blue whale. Now with this insane netherite block, we could fill up an entire shulker box top to bottom with stacks of it. And once Whoa. we're done filling that up, we could use control pick block, and that copies the shulker box into no. your inventory with all of this MBT data. Okay, oh that, yeah. We are now carrying 284,000 tons in just one shulker box. Which thanks to this random Steve is strong. Quora, what we're holding is more than the weight of a skyscraper. One shulker box and netherite blocks is a skyscraper. You can what? actually grab a chest and fill it up with these shulker boxes. Take that chest into your inventory, and you can start filling up another chest with stacks of the previous chest. And you can actually continue doing this no. process with the pick block technique for a long time until eventually you reach a depth tag limit of the game, which is doing this 171 times. So after doing that entire process 171 times, you should result in a final chest, which once again you can multiply this through your inventory and also into your offhand to get the max stuffies you can hold. And uh, what? I, I actually have no clue how much this is. So I then spent an entire afternoon calculating it all. And I, 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 I completely... Oh, let's just... Whoa, 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 just text about. I did not think about the fact that you could, over and over again, copy what is in a chest with the MBD tag so the chest has it in. Yeah, that is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like a, it's like an OP version of the shulker box. Because I thought it would be cool for this time lapse, but in reality, it just gave me extreme brain rot. But here we are, and this is the number I got. And uh, I went to some random math website, and it told me that's um <laughs> this many tons, seven oh followed by six hundred eighteen zeros. Mm -hmm. This website also has a word out section for my number, but it, it's only telling me that my number is too big, even as I scroll. And after some furthermore calculations, I found out that saying our number is heavier than the observable universe is an understatement our number is so big that steve could what? basically hold this many universes and even steve could hold that many universes the universe last i checked is a pretty heavy play wow okay steve might be the strongest character that exists ever created this number is so big i can't even visualize it going back to the one website it basically says i had 667 168 ilion mini universes i don't even know what that number is that steve wow. could just carry around but another thing is the minecraft earth is different than our earth it means that the gravity that steve experiences is different than the gravity that we experience and this could affect that how much he feels his weight there's different gravity- I paused it in unfortunate time. There's different gravities? I never even thought about that, but yeah, I guess it would make sense. I set up this experiment to determine how strong gravity is by determining the sand's rate of itself. By the way, guys, you'll never use maths at school. Okay, this guy proves that wrong. <laughs> Everything you use to learn at school actually might come in handy for Minecraft. Now all I gotta do is press this button and... Ah, uh, so I don't need to do my... 2.9 times stronger than in real life. Okay, so that means Steve's even stronger than we first thought. Research. Thank you, internet. Anyways, if we take our previous number of tons and then multiply it by the new gravity, we get... Uh oh. Oh no. A number too big. Ross Strayant's conclusion. Steve can hold the entire multiverse. Okay, cool. Now that you're beginning to understand just the stupidity of how strong Steve is, let's head over to speed. To start off, I built a 100 block race course. So, we've got, his, we, we've got his strength. Was. We know that he is, he can hold literally the entire multiverse, pretty much. 
And now we're going to see just how fast this guy is. Okay. Ran it all. I put that clip into my editing software and cropped out the exact points where it begins and finishes. And it told me that it took 14.4 seconds for Steve to run 100 blocks. Or in other words, 15.5 miles per hour. Which should be clear, each block in Minecraft has a one cubed meter correlation to real life. And in real life, the 100 meter dash record is 19.58 seconds by Usain Bolt. So just by casually running, we're already one of the fastest people in the world. But no, no, we could go faster. That's it. Nobody was faster than Usain Bolt. getting a base fly test speed, which came out to be 5.07 seconds, aka 44 miles per hour. But Steve could still fly a lot faster than that. By going in spectator, not many people know this, but by scrolling up on your mouse, you could actually turn up your acceleration speed. Wait, what? You could actually go extremely fast. I didn't even know that. You could use the scroll wheel on your mouse to speed up. Platform. I eventually launched myself so fast, I zipped past the finish line and accidentally started loading out new chunks behind it. And just to see how fast that was, it was 1.42 seconds to reach it, aka 157 miles per hour. Is that hour, the fastest Steve can go? as fast as a skydiver going headfirst out of a plane. But now we reached a point where there's only one way to go faster. Drugs. Get the old, uh, get the old speed box In out. Minecraft, as we all know, there are potion effects. When splashed with one of these speed two potions, I was going to use commands to make it even increase, faster. But that number is nothing. By doing slash effects, you could actually boost yourself up with speed 255. But I noticed in order to test it, we need a better runway than the small dinky thing. Yeah, too, so too small. Make a bigger two, runway. The considerably larger version, which I built a 10,000 <laughs> block track for, and only cuts through staggering five god dang villages because my dumb dumb head. <laughs> it wasn't getting rid of the villages, he just was going straight through. I track off with a golden pad to stop me. So by going to the beginning of the track, I gave myself speed and I began running. As you can see, we're actually running so fast, the road is struggling to load in. So I put on chunk force so you can get more of a sense of scale. You can also see wow. the ridiculous speed of the yeah, Is the chunk loading slowing down? Then? Once I reached the finish line, I threw the clip into Premiere Pro and it ended up taking 34. 15 seconds. And after doing some brief calculations, it ends up being 655 miles an hour. The speed of sound. We are casually walking faster than a literal plane. But the thing is, you could still go faster than this. In Ow. Minecraft, you could actually slash attribute your speed to become your new base. But unlike the speed effects earlier that cap out at 255, for this we could just. Yeah. And now, yeah, with no just limit. one little click of the W key, I immediately run off the course of the entire face of the Earth. And eventually, I just lag backwards a few thousand blocks because my PC can't handle it. Look, if I hold down W and continue running, my PC absolutely no destroys itself. No way! I didn't know you could go this fast. Fans going off. But if I try it again, this time with my cords open, you can see we launch about 10,000 blocks and then we begin slowing down due to the lack of ground underneath us. But by looking at this footage frame by frame, we could actually see a few numbers. So I record them down on a graphing calculator and you can see I actually start slowing down right after the first frame because by then I've already fully ran outside the blocks rendering around me. Meaning in the 0.01 second I was able to touch ground, I ran 1,003 meters, which is what? the equivalent of 223,000 miles per hour. Which is this is getting more and more mind blowing. As a human Steve is we have came close on another to level. To. With this speed, you could literally run around the entire earth in just six minutes. But if that's too slow for you, there's still slash TP, which allows you to instantly Goku teleport anywhere you want. Now you may yeah, be I don't even, we can't class TP is speed, speed, can we? It actually doesn't. Here's the thing, there's actually a limit to how fast you can teleport. In Minecraft, the slash teleport command takes exactly one in-game tick to register, which is 1 20th of a second, aka 0.05 seconds. But now we need to find out the max distance we can travel within that 0.05 time frame. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the longest line that could fit within a cuboid goes from one corner to the opposing corner. Oh yeah, you know I'm going nerd mode when I introduce a high school math subject. <laughs> Although I told you coming think that the Minecraft world is infinite, it's, it's not. The borders at 29,999,983 blocks in each direction. But you could also teleport an additional 16 blocks beyond that given point. So sure, we could teleport from one corner to the other. Is that 100% as far as you can get? Can you not like glitch out further? We also have to go up and down as much as possible. The exact max height that you could teleport to is apparently 19,999,999 blocks in the sky. And from underneath the road, in order to see the max distance we could go to, I had to give myself regeneration so I could survive whilst in the void. So I began testing out and I found out that what? the furthest length you could teleport to is negative 20 How million far did you go down? Total. I have no clue why it's only one block more than the positive level, but whatever. So I then imagined the entire Minecraft world onto wow. Windows Paint. So the greatest distance you could teleport to is all the way down. I quite like math, by the way, guys. So I find this really interesting. There. Yeah, and after a few A squared, B squared, C squareds, I found out that it's actually a 93.8 million block difference. So, what exactly does it mean if you were to travel 93 million meters in just a 20th of a second? Well...
on which modern physics is based, nothing in the universe can travel faster than light. Except, tell you what, you Light except. speed is the fastest thing in the universe. It is the closest thing to instant. Light speed is so stupidly fast, it's been theorized by achieving even up to a tenth of it. Space and time itself will begin to warp. Yeah, so we achieved six times the speed of light. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only four. Steve can go six, six times the speed of light. No. 312 miles per hour. I don't know. Oh, wait, hear this. By achieving faster than light speeds, you will achieve infinite mass, which means you will then achieve infinite force, which means you also then have infinite damage. So, uh, that's something. Steve has infinite speed, infinite force, infinite power. I mean, Ow, Steve uh, is fast. I, I What's the next, uh... I the have next to hurry this video up. up. Okay, now moving on to durability. So you may think that Creative Steve is actually invincible, which is mostly true. Things like the Void, as I said earlier, are easily survivable with just more generation. So, just to make it somewhat fair, we're going to use Survival Mode Steve for durability. But first, we need something that Okay, so yeah, take my crib. Survival so Mode Steve is being used. Okay. And for that, there is TNT. That thing that also exists in real life. Now, although it is a one cubic meter literal bomb, that doesn't actually mean anything. We need to find out how much damage- Why is he killing baby villagers? So I created a custom world just made out of stone, and I dug into the ground to make this giant stone wall. And what I did is I made a little tunnel inside the giant stone wall, spawned in a piece of TNT, and then quickly patched it up. Then once the TNT goes off, I could go into spectator, and I could start seeing how much stone the TNT actually blew up by how much cobblestone it broke. I then repeated this process nine more times, and I put all the numbers onto an average calculator. Yes, I use a calculator to find the average. It's more time efficient, okay? It is more time efficient. 30.9 was the average stone broken per TNT. Now, Thanks to some Elon Musk ascendant on Reddit, they calculated how much joules of power would be needed to destroy a one cubic meter cube of limestone. So this is how you convert how t strong TNT in Minecraft is into real life. This is interesting. That's for limestone, and the stone that we have in Minecraft is clearly not limestone. Now, thanks to some more plagiarized studies I stole, a stone called Rhyolite is theorized to be the. This is like a bigger project than a than a than a university thing, isn't it? Like a big college study. <laughs> you see in the game, and something called the Moss Scale tells us that Rhyolite is 2.4 times harder than limestone. So we can then multiply the joules needed to blow up limestone by 2.4, and then multiply that again by the 30.9 average stone broken in our experiment. And there, now we know that there is. <laughs> 574 million joules of power per TNT explosion. Wow. Or okay. a real-life equivalent of 960. Okay, TNT Minecraft is pretty pretty powerful, well, isn't well, it? But this is what a nuclear bomb would look like if it was in Minecraft. This but the thing is, I'm pretty sure Steve can survive a point-blank TNT with the right armor. Now, is it going to test him with max armor? We will see. It's filled up with 8,000 blocks of TNT. Or in other words, 4.59 trillion joules of potential energy. And now I'm going to light it on myself. Wait, did Steve survive it? Oh, I guess. How I the guess heck he, he did I survive effects. that without a single scratch with no armor in survival mode? Well, it's pretty easy. I just gave myself max resistance before setting it off. Can you even kill no, yourself no, in no. Max Surely resistance? I could deal at least some damage to myself. Come on. In crystals I found have a bigger explosion than TNT. So by doing the same methods as before, I found out that each end crystal has 817 million joules of energy. So I set up a little experiment. Now with end crystals as well, you can put them all in the exact same spot so that all of that is is kind of concentrate and I think you can have infinite amount of end crystals before your game lags obviously so let's let's see I set up nine command blocks all with the same purpose to spawn ink crystals on me so after giving myself resistance I turned them all on and I stood in the middle as I watched it instantly oh my goodness in crystals spawning around me and on the top left where it says E you could actually see how many ink crystals are being spawned around me so as wow. I sat there my frame slowly became more and more AIDS until it reached a point where I felt like my PC was about to crash so I started to spam hit and then eventually once we reached 24,500 198 ink crystals the hits went through when I started Ooh. exploding only to all do literally no damage You're So kidding with the 24,598 ink crystals I spawned I did some calculating and I found out that the explosion I just looked up was actually stronger than the bomb that took out all of Hiroshima in 1945 I don't feel good saying that. And that's still without even using glitched OP armor or super strong attributes I don't understand how strong is Steve with resistance? Oh, Steve is invincible past only resistance 5 <laughs> oh yeah, because each resistance level removes 20% of damage. So resistance 5 removes 100% of damage. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Steve is literally immortal? Yeah, Steve's immortal. <laughs> Wait, does that mean he's immortal in the... 
in, in the void as well. We've he must be. Wow, okay. Resistance 5 and he's a model in the thing. What do I even say anymore? If you made it this far and you still aren't convinced that Steve could destroy 99.99% of fiction, I'm just going to speed around a few more insane things Steve could do. So to test strength, I recoded the Warden's HP from 500 to this number, which is 10 to the 305th power times 5 of the Ender Dragon's HP. And with just strength alone, Steve could literally one-shot this kidding with me? his fist. Oh, and infinite just for the fun of it, let's turn this nearly. infinitely strong hit using attribute into this, which it may not look like much, but I'm actually hitting an infinite amount of times every second. And just to show you how stupid this is, I made an entire pool of these stupidly strong wardens, and I jumped in and I immediately defeated them all with ease. Oh, and with the execute command, you can actually go between dimensions, making Steve interdimensional or multiverse oh, yeah. by just joining other worlds and servers. And Multi Steve could also yeah. bring his items too using the saved inventory feature. Possesses time manipulation with slash time, he could literally just do a quick command to create worlds eating barriers. He has access to the secret Minecraft item known as the Knowledge Book, which allows you to know all the crafting recipes. Can alter matter itself. That's what the Knowledge Book does. What? Why did I never know that? Honestly, Steve is that powerful. There, there is nothing. Oh, is it? We are the players. So powerful. And for height, not only is he six foot two. On the Bedrock version of the game, you could do slash play animation, and you could literally make yourself a giant. He could create <laughs> little nukes that. with fireballs. He could literally slash summon anything. Or if he doesn't feel like doing that, he could use glitched eggs to summon other things. I know this looks extremely <laughs> cursed. Summon eggs. I didn't know really that. So he could just use Someone a fan lock to instantly kill everything around him, regardless of durability. Yeah. So not only is Steve strong, but he is a literal god. So what Kratos could flip nine realms? Steve could literally hold the entire multiverse. Doomsayer could resist getting shot with the BFG 10k, but that's still nothing compared to infinite durability. Oh, but Goku could teleport at the speed of light. Well, guess what? Steve goes six times the speed of light. You get what I'm getting at. Steve should be able to destroy anyone and everything in There is nothing more powerful than Steve like that's ever so been thought of by anyone. Say that creative Steve is overrated or weak ever again. Wow. Steve is very, very strong and powerful.